What's up guys, Steven here. Welcome back to the real history of Huawei. So guys, we have a big piece of history here on the table. So the whole history of Huawei, from 3G USB modems over feature phones, slider phones, to high-end flagships like the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. But before we have a closer look at all the smartphones, let's dig deep down the rabbit hole and let's reveal the real, true history of Huawei. The company Huawei was founded in 1987 by a former officer of the Chinese People's Liberation Army. It has grown into a technology giant with the help from its ties to the Chinese government. Huawei is the world's second largest seller of phones behind Samsung, according to the IDC. It is best known for making high-end phones with appealing designs and premium hardware features that rival devices from Samsung and Apple. While global consumers may know the brand best for its consumer electronics, which also include laptops, tablets and TVs, Huawei's history is in providing telecommunications equipment. So in basic words, Huawei also sells some of the hardware that lets your phone connect to wireless networks. And they used to sell gear to the US wireless carriers too. But that ended more than a decade ago. Concerns about Huawei are right now a big thing, at least in part from the history of its 74-year-old founder, Ren Shangfei, who has long had ties with both the People's Liberation Army, where he served as an engineer, and the Communist Party. Moreover, his company has grown into a globe-straddling monster, the world's largest telecoms equipment manufacturer, selling in 170 countries. Huawei also overtook Apple earlier this year to become the world's second largest smartphone maker behind Samsung. Ren grew up poor, the son of teachers in a remote mountainous town in southwestern province of Gaizhou. He studied at the Chongqing Institute of Civil Engineering and Architecture and later joined the military in 1970. When he moved to Zhenzhen after quitting the army, he started Huawei with roughly $5,000 in capital from five investors and no obvious plan what he wants to do. Initially, Huawei just mostly sold telephone exchange equipment from Hong Kong, but soon moved into making their own hardware. Huawei was reverse engineering imported switches and investing heavily in research and development to manufacture its own technologies. By 1990, the company had around 600 R&D staff and began its own independent commercialization of switches targeting hotels and small enterprises. This is why Huawei nowadays is split into two parties, Huawei Mobile and Huawei Enterprises. In 1997, Huawei won a contract to provide a fixed-line network product to a big Hong Kong company. And later that year, Huawei launched its first wireless GSM-based products and expanded to offer CDMA and UMTS. It was a big thing back in the days. In July 2003, Huawei established their handset department and by 2004, Huawei shipped their first phone, the C300. The U626 was Huawei's first 3G phone in June 2005 and in 2006, Huawei launched the first Vodafone-branded 3G handset, the Wii 710. 2005 was a really big year for Huawei. Their foreign contract orders exceeded its domestic sales for the first time. And Huawei signed a global framework agreement with Vodafone. This agreement marked the first time a telecommunications equipment supplier from China had received an approved supplier status from Vodafone Global Supply Chain. Huawei also delivered one of the world's first LTE EPC commercial networks for Telia Sonera in Oslo, in Norway in 2009. The company launched the world's first end-to-end -end 100G solution from routers to transmission systems the same year, to help meet the rapid growth of network traffic and enhance router efficiency and reliability. The U8220 was Huawei's first Android smartphone and was unveiled in MWC 2009 as well. And since then, their sales got crazy. My first Huawei Android device was a $100 Huawei that I picked up in 2012. It was mediocre but cheap. A tagline that could sum up the whole public sentiment about the brand at that time. But all of this has changed for Huawei. Due to local market strategies, great products with heavy R&D investments, and a lot of collaborations with A-list celebrities, which have a massive fan base. Huawei was in a good way to grow. 
With the launch of the P9, more and more people started to realize that Huawei is not shit anymore, that it's not a fake product, that it is much better than they have expected. And it is changing the mentality of the people. They are starting to think, China, wow, that's impressive and not cheap. And with continuing that strategy throughout the P10, P20, Huawei grew to the number two smartphone maker in the world. And I'm sure they are gonna overtake Samsung by 2020. So guys, I really hope that you now got an idea on how Huawei got the second biggest smartphone manufacturer in the world. But well, let's have a closer look at that piece of history from Huawei, because I was so excited when I received all the smartphones and I really want to show you my personal favorite ones. And write a comment down below if you owned one of these smartphones, because we are writing history today. So well, Huawei got uh, really big with these things. So just USB 3G modems. Um, this one here is T-Mobile branded. And just remember back in the days when you got your first 3G router, modem or whatever, it was probably a Huawei device, at least if you're based in Europe. Because in Austria, for instance, if you go to any provider, you mostly receive a Huawei networking device. And this is where they got really, really big with the provider business. But they have been an OEM manufacturer for years and then they started their own smartphones and some of the smartphones here are made by Huawei but they don't have the Huawei branding on them. So well um, let's start with this one here. So as you can see um, this here is a slider smartphone but it has the Vodafone branding on it. So also here in the back but this here is actually a Huawei smartphone. So basically what Huawei did is they OEM manufactured um, the smartphone for Vodafone and tiny somewhere inside of the device. Um, let's see if we can actually see it if we remove the, the battery case. All right, I managed to remove the battery. It wasn't that easy. But if you have a closer look here inside of the smartphone, you will see um, it actually has a Vodafone model number, but there's a tiny reading down there which says it's a Huawei smartphone or manufactured by Huawei. So this is how they got um, the first, um, yeah, let's say steps into the um, smartphone business. But um, a little bit later, they actually started to release real Huawei branded smartphones, like this slider smartphone. And damn it, guys, this phone is really cool. I loved using it. It also got a camera on the back. And let's see if it turns on because, yeah, as you can see, um, it's still working. Haven't charged it. So it seems there's a little bit of juice in the battery left. And well, a um, micro USB standard, as you can see, um, sliding smartphone, literally there's no Android on it, some kind of weird operating system, but this was also something which Huawei sold a lot. Then here you can see some more, actually um, more smartphone lookalikes, as you can see, still the Vodafone branding. So Huawei manufactured that one here for Vodafone. Um, yeah, let's go here through some other smartphones, which are pretty interesting flip smartphones. So as you can see, bam, there you go. I still remember, I think it was called the uh, Motorola Razer something, something. Um, this was really popular, but also here Huawei had some flip smartphones. Now, I'm not a big fan of flip smartphones at all, but I mean, it, it really has style if you just pick up your call like this. I mean, businessman style, whatever. I really love this some um, flip smartphones. Um, yeah, a lot of more feature phones and then we came um, into the days where it was really popular to have a full-size keyboard on your smartphone. So just remember BlackBerry. BlackBerry was once really popular, but now the market share reached zero um, last year, which is really, really sad. But because um, BlackBerry was so popular, also Huawei actually produced smartphones with a keyboard. So check this out, guys. There's a full-size keyboard, it's super tiny. The whole phone has a mini USB or something, um, yeah, charging connector, a two megapixel camera. It feels super cheap, super fucked up. I really can't see myself using that. What's really cool, and this was one of the first Android smartphones, I had a similar smartphone to this. I can't remember, it was the Google blah, 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 something. Um, looked very similar to this one here with a sliding keyboard. Uh, yeah, let's turn it on. Let's see if this one here is still working. And oh my god, it's on. I think I turned it on before and there's still a foil on it. So, oh yeah, let's peel this off. So that's really cool. That's one of the first Android smartphones with the first version of Android and it is even a touch screen. I mean, it's not working really good. The touch screen is super unresponsive. But this was one of the first devices with keyboard, with a trackball to actually go through the menu, as you can see right over here, and a touchscreen. 
Okay guys, I managed to connect to my home network, so at least it's saying I'm getting the IP. And let's try to open up YouTube. Uh, for some reason it says, attention, there is no network connection right now. And oh my God, check out this YouTube app. So I still remember the days when I had this YouTube application and I was scrolling through the videos with this trackball, which is, yeah, <laughs> it feels so damn weird. If you just keep in mind that we now have proper smartphones. So, well, also Google Mail seems not to work anymore. So yeah, this smartphone needs to be updated, I guess. And I'm not really sure if it's even still working with that Android version. Anyway, um, after we had um, some feature phones, some early attempts at smartphones, some phones um, which are like Blackberries, but with Android, um, Huawei went into the smartphone business and then they got really, really big. So here we have one of the first um, Android smartphones from Huawei, as you can see. So this is more what it looks nowadays, eight megapixel camera, carbon back cover. So yeah, this looks more like what we know smartphones look like. And this is also something which is really interesting. And uh, many people didn't know that Huawei was actually making Windows smartphones. And here we have one. So this here is a Huawei Windows phone. And yeah, it's not working because it's very lightweight. There's probably no battery inside, but this was also a kind of popular phone. If you can say Windows phones were ever popular. Then we're coming to 2017, 2018, 2019, because here we have the Huawei Y series. Now, as you know, Huawei is producing a lot of smartphones and they have um, smartphones for every region. So they have smartphones for India, um, cheaper models. They have smartphones for Eastern Europe, which are also still cheap, but a little bit more expensive. And then they have the mid-range light series from the P20, P10, Mate 10, Mate 20, or they have the high-end flagships like um, the Mate 20 Pro. So right over here, we have the Huawei Y6 Prime. As you can see, it's a kind of solid model with a 13 megapixel camera. Now this smartphone I think is, is around 200 euros, so it's a very cheap entry level smartphone, even though um, it's still pretty good quality. It's full plastic body, has a fingerprint scanner. Now this smartphone um, has a Snapdragon 425, so I can quickly show you the specs right over here. Three gigs of RAM, um, 720p display actually, 1440 times 720. And yeah, um, this smartphone here, it's an okay smartphone I would say, but um, it's not something I would use. So um, here we have done another um, smartphone of the Y series. So let's check this quickly out. If we go here to system and about the phone. So this here is the Y5 2018. So they usually upgrade the models every year. There's also a 2019 model, I'm pretty sure um, this year. And this one here is using a MediaTek chipset. So Huawei is not um, is using a lot of different chipsets. So as you can see, we have a Snapdragon chipset. We have a MediaTek chipset in this device. But also for instance, we have Huawei's um, own Kirin chipsets. And this is something which is really cool about China. China is right now um, in the beginning of the supply chain. So they have a lot of manufacturers and they can get everything they want. They just have um, one requirement and this is the price. So basically when you design a smartphone, you name a price, then Huawei is checking the market. What can we get? What features do we put in it to make it um, appealing to this region for that price? And this is what you can only do in China. This is why people move to Shenzhen to get their products done. All right, then here we have the Huawei P Smart. So this is the 2019 model and has actually just been released right now. So this is um, really new. I'm actually planning to make a review about it and it has some pretty good specifications for the price to be honest. So um, you can check it out right over here. It's running Android 9, three gigs of RAM. We have um, a 2340 times 1080p display. Uh, Kirin 710 and this smartphone here re retails for 240 euros. So dual camera, AI dual camera, fingerprint scanner, glossy back cover, um, plastic back cover, but some nice curved um, chin here as you can see. Yeah, um, we have here um, the front facing camera in the middle of the screen. So it's actually a quite decent smartphone for the price and a review will come very soon. So stay tuned. Um, if you already want to watch a review, check out my buddy, um, Techline HD, um, he already reviewed the smartphone. So well, um, the slider phone is also working right now, as you can see. So um, let's have a closer look at Huawei's feature phone. Can anyone remember that song? I still have it in my brain. Uh, yeah, 
feature phones, something where Huawei got really big, um, especially doing OEM um, manufacturing for other manufacturers. And here, check it out, guys. So uh, we can go to the menu here. And do you remember all that? So this really um, throws me back 10 years. And it's really killing my brain right now. Check out this amazing camera. Holy crap. What a piece of shit. <laughs> back in the days. All right, guys, now we have um, great smartphones like the Mate 20 Pro, which I'm using as my main phone. Um, yeah, I got it for free from Huawei because attending the launch event, like every other reviewer, this is what Huawei is doing and this is also part of their success. They give out the phones at their event and say, keep it, but please post something about it. And this is why their marketing just works. So everybody is really into making Huawei videos because they get a device for free. Now, for sure, I also like um, getting stuff for free, but I use Huawei not because I got it for free, but because it's a really great smartphone. Great camera, great battery, and this is something you need as a YouTuber. Now, regarding um, the back cover and, on, and the overall design of the Mate 20 Pro, not the biggest fan of it. Would prefer other smartphones, but, well, features, it's a really good one. So, guys, um, thanks for having a closer look at the history of Huawei with me. Now, I was really motivated to do this video because, well, it brings me down to my childhood and I had a lot of these smartphones, at least in my hands or my friends had it. And if you had one of these phones, then put it down below into the comments. I would be very interested to see how many people are watching me and had these Huawei smartphones. All right, guys, so big thanks for watching this video here until the end. Please subscribe to help me out. YouTube is right now killing my channel, not getting a lot of views. Um, also, a lot of um, my subscribers do not get the video into the feed. So please hit the subscribe button and also hit the tiny bell next to it to get notifications and stay up to date with me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, big thanks for watching. I'm signing out. I'm Steven from Tech Magnet and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a nice day and bye.